Uh, it's great to be having a chat this morning with Tom Parker Bowles. Um, Tom is an esteemed food writer and critic um, and is the author of several cookbooks. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much for chatting uh, today. Hi, Gavin. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> um, very kind. Um, uh, when did your sort of love of cooking and food emerge? Was it sort of cooking at home as you grew up or at uni or sort of later I, on i suppose i suppose it's always because i mean it, it really comes from no, nothing more um uh, nothing more than greed really i suppose you know <laughs> I, I i could come up with some you know eloquent explanation oh god sorry that's making a noise sorry um i'm just gonna put myself on silent and say do you want me to say it again because otherwise it's gonna no, go it's through. fine don't worry because mine does that a bit too and i okay. can't find a job so just Nor don't worry I. okay don't worry. Um, doesn't matter doesn't so matter. anyway, um, um, my 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 love of food it, it comes from greed. I mean, I'd like to say it comes from some you know sort of higher level, something beautiful and eloquent, like you know the love of um, oak cuisine and all the rest. But no, it's pure greed. I'm very greedy. I grew up in a in a in a house with parents and sister who 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 love food. Um, you know, it was my mother was a is, is was a good cook. Is a good cook. My father shot and fished and was a massively still is a massively keen gardener. So I suppose we 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 grew up with. You know all these sort of buzzwords you have now local seasonal organic we, that, that was sort of what we grew up on although we found it very boring when we were going we want to go and have rice magic and white bread and coca-cola from sainsbury's and mcdonald's yes. and the, and we had to have boring you know brown trout and um yeah. artichokes and asparagus from the garden so there's i suppose some sort of irony in that but yes yeah. we, we all love food and we we're all slightly obsessed with food so that's where it came from okay and and uh, what do you think was it always the path you were going to take Oh or God, no, no, what no! Uh, to, what were you sort of going to be doing? Or I, I had, on? I mean, I, I sort of slipped my way through through school and, uh, I suppose, university to an extent. Um, I didn't excel in anything. I was fairly sort of crap at most things. Um, and sure, then wow. I left university. Well, I mean, yeah, it really was. I was, I was no good sporting prowess or anything like that. <laughs> but I left university and I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. So I ended up working for a film publicity company because I love films. And I thought, this is brilliant. I go to screenings and, um, you know, uh, you know, meet movie stars, which I suppose you do. You're looking after them. But I was rubbish at that. So I used to get sat from every job I did because I wasn't very good at <laughs> timekeeping. I occasionally got sort of you know, overdid it and didn't and turned up late. I, I think I'm very bad at working in an office. Um, but I did still love food. And at that point after university, I suppose I was I, I was cooking a little bit more. And then I remembered years ago, I said about 1999, I totted up to the editor of Tatler, who was Geordie Gregg, who's who, who's still a great friend now. But yeah, you no, know, I, I think I was a bit merry and I sort of came up to him and I, you know, I thought probably better to go to Tatler than the socialist worker with a name like mine. And I said, oh, you haven't got a food column. So he he gave me, you know, he said, okay, write me a food column. And I wrote about prep school food, which which is probably many of your uh, members know, um, or, yes. or, or boarding school food was utterly sort of debauched and deranged, deranged yeah. and disgusting, disgusting every single way. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. So that that perhaps I can thank my prep school for um, turning greed into, you know, into, into well, a, a healthy appetite, into real greed. But yes, yeah, so that was all right. The first one, then I started doing a monthly column for Tatler. Um, and then, you know, one thing led to another and I started doing the Mail on Sunday and that was it. Suddenly I was, you know, being paid to eat food and write about it. It's, I still... Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I'm, st I'm still <laughs> 20, you know, 24 years on. I'm still, you know, pinch myself. It's, it's you know, Fantastic. to do a job that you love and obsessed by is, is, is wonderful. So yeah, I got very lucky. Yeah. Um, and what do you enjoy most, Tom? Do, do you enjoy the actual cooking of it, the creating of these um, lovely things? Or do you like the eating? Well, obviously you like the eating, probably. <laughs> Everyone likes the eating. Um, eating but, yeah. or, or do you love the writing about it? Well, I, you know, cooking, I find really relaxes me, you know, especially when, I mean, obviously when the days where I was you know I was cooking for the children more it wasn't so much fun I can see why it can be incredible I didn't have to do it all the time my ex-wife obviously did it a lot um but it was quite boring you know the sort of day-to-day -day slog I can see that's not so much fun but you know a day spent going off shopping and getting fish or meat and and and, and slow cooking or, or whatever you're doing is for me a day well spent I find it very therapeutic it's yeah. it, it's I move very fast I talk very fast it sort of slows me down to a 
a, a normal pace. And so I love cooking. Obviously, I love eating. Um, yeah. And then writing is a funny one. You know, it's sometimes you're sat with a Word document in front of you and everything just splurges out and, you know, you just it just comes out and you think, wow. Sometimes I sit staring, you know, and also I'm a great sort of uh, procrastinator. I'll find any excuse to, you know, e even before I spoke to you, I was supposed to be carrying on the book I'm doing. Um, and, you know, you make a cup of tea or you I suddenly really find... <laughs> <laughs> oh, like anything, any reason not to do it. And I think yeah. editors, you know, mm -hmm. the deadlines are looming. They're, you know, I think Douglas Adams said he loved the sound of a deadline whizzing past his head. Well, I think with a lot of us, that's the case. I can only yeah. really work on deadline. You know, if someone says, yeah. oh, file it whenever, it, it will never come in. But I, I love, you know, I think like a lot of writers do, I love I love the act of writing. You know, it's like a, a sculptor. You chuck down the clay, the raw material, and bit by bit, you chip yeah. it and you work, and work at it until it becomes something that, that you feel confident enough to, to send into your editor so yes I love all of it so yeah yeah most of it okay brilliant and um so obviously you've written several books um mm. on you know food and recipes and and all sorts of delicious things um are you so so you're writing a book at the moment what yes what are you writing at the moment are you, are you able to tell us I not I mean it's, it's not really any great state secret and it's certainly not some sort of um explosive uh it's, it's not going to be of any interest but I haven't quite I've got to send the proposal to my agent so okay, fair enough. Have, it really isn't that interesting and 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 it will probably you know like a, a lot of my books you know it, it won't trouble JK Rowling but let's but it, it's always well fun. you you yeah. never know we we will wait with bated breath well I wouldn't, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't have bated breath too much but yes it is once you're back in the I did a lot of books recently for for Fort Mason that was a whole different thing because rather than the books I did which are cookbooks or histories of English food or eating weird food the Fortnum's ones were very much, you know, Fortnum's was going for 350 years. So you write all the copy and go deep into the archive and then the chefs do their recipe. So it was a very different yeah. thing. But those ones sell rather well because obviously yes, they've got this no, wonderful, sure. wonderful shop to, to flog them through. Yeah, yeah. And and um, w would you ever want to teach cooking, do you think? Or is that not really at your straza? I, yeah, I love to teach. I, you know, it's basically, I wouldn't be able to be very good at this sort of, you know, there's, there's a huge difference, as you well know, between between a cook and, and a chef. A chef is, is yes. sitting as part of the line. It's incredibly hard work. You're working all hours of the day in, you know, dark, sweaty mm. uh, kitchens. Yeah. And you're, you're one part of a process, usually. You know, whereas we, us as home cooks, is much more relaxed. But I do feel that I've often thought of doing a course, perhaps, of, you know, a lot of people say to me, friends say, you know, how do you make it? You know, really basic things. These guys are sort of, uh, and, and women are, are high-flying, highly successful people, but yet a salad dressing, um, an omelette, a steak, um, yeah. a tomato sauce for pasta, these things that we all take for granted and you you know off by heart, they're, they're so easy, but it, it's slightly annoying people like me saying, oh, it's so easy. If you don't know how to do it, or yeah, where yeah. to start, or yeah. how to use a knife. So perhaps, yes, I, I quite like, I mean, I'm, the children, I have two children, they're sort of 15 and nearly 13, and my daughter's quite good, but, you know, she won't always listen quite rightly but they she never you know, she does their parents do they no, no, <laughs> but yeah i i quite like you know i have thought with a great friend of mine called matthew thought that um we were going to you know sort of doing a, a very basic cookery course of, of mm. you know if you can do these five dishes you're sort of gonna be all right um yeah, so yeah, yeah but again just work gets in the way we can't really grand know, ideas. time isn't it time. time and time yeah. um and, and ever thought about having your um own restaurant no god no no <laughs> absolutely not i love restaurants i have the great you know my whole life is built around restaurants yes um but my friends who have restaurants they work incredibly hard it's very yeah. very difficult yeah uh to well not just to make a living but to make money especially now as mm. prices are soaring this cost yeah. of living crisis margins are falling um you know chefs are in high demand now because yeah. it, it, it's yeah. very much a seller's market and you know you think oh isn't it nice you know you sit have all your friends in sit at the table but it's not really little, like that is it <laughs> it is such hard work and I, you know I've got lots of friends who have restaurants because that's my world and mm. you know it's yes of course you get a lot of pleasure and a lot of joy from it when it goes well but my god it, it's not yeah. it's not easy no no um and um so you you did uh you were a food critic on um master chef still am yes well, see, yeah, uh, yeah. and you, do you enjoy that 
Yeah, I mean, that's not, it's not mean, like you're going down a coal mine. <laughs> it's, I guess it's, it's, you sit, you get driven to the studio in, in Far East London. Yeah. You sit, usually your friends, whether it's Grace or or, or, or William or, or, or whoever it is, um, you eat food and it's very rare. A MasterChef is very, usually on food television, the food is freezing cold when you're eating it because you... That's the, what you I was going to ask, actually. Well, exactly. The, the food is cooked. And I did a lot of shows in, in Australia for the last five years. Um where the food is cooked, yeah. cameras stop, then you do something called the pawn shot, which is not what you might think the pawn shot is, is where <laughs> you close up the food and it looks... And then so by the time it gets to us, it's freezing. Okay. Um, oh. And you're used to that. But MasterChef is absolutely real time. When you see them rushing, go, 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 and into the into the judges thing, um, it, it is warm. And it's so that, you know, you sit all day with your friends eating and talking about it. I mean, there are definitely worse things to do. They yeah, really are, yeah. aren't they? Um, and have you ever had to sort of navigate yourself around any sort of embarrassing moments when on air, like absolutely hating what you're trying? On oh, well, MasterChef's different because you can be honest. Um, yes, yes. Sometimes I, I did a show for a few years called Market Kitchen, which which actually was more of a sort of magazine food show, and it was me and oh. Matthew Fort and Matt Tebbett and um, and lots of other people, but. That was fine because you're interviewing chefs and trying stuff. The shows in Australia, occasionally you'd have your executive producer in your ear and saying, look, you know, can we have something positive on this? And, <laughs> yeah. you know, you'd be, you'd be pushed. Try and muster something, up something positive. positive. And you try to be honest, you know, that's the point. Mm. If it's you standing there or saying it, you can't really be dishonest. But you don't want to be nasty. You don't want to be cool no, for no reason. You know, people are, it's very difficult cooking on television with four cameras in your face under a time yeah. limit and then having three sort of rather pampered food critics who sit there. You know, yeah, <laughs> holding it must be a about it. So you, I would be terrified. Doing yeah, that. I'd be absolutely terrified to do Master Chef. So I have Lots the greatest questions. respect for for all of them. Yeah. Mm. Um. And uh, so, when you're at home or sort of with family, are you always sort of the designated uh, cook, or um, you sort of manage to? I suppose yes. If the ch with children, well, obviously the children. I suppose you. Yeah, I'm quite, you know, I'm quite sort of, I suppose the kitchen, I suppose, is my, I suppose, is to a certain extent, my realm at home. Yeah. Um. So, yes, when I'm with my father, actually, when I'm with my father, I'd cook, I suppose, but he would sort of get the stuff. My mother, yeah. not so much anymore. No, she, no. she, and also her tastes are very different. From, I like lots of chili and, and, and garlic, and I have a mm. huge love of Thai food and Mexican food and Chinese yes. food and Indian food. And she, you know, she her her tastes are rather more plain. Um, so I haven't cooked for her. Okay, for so a, you sort of clash, well, not time. clash, but <laughs> well, we well we sort of yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. I suppose that I yeah. We have different views. She she although she hasn't done it, she she is a very good cook, and people say, oh yeah, you always say that, but she genuinely is. So, you know, oh. she, she had to cook for us all our lives and and yeah. us growing yeah. up, and she really can cook. So, um. Yeah, but I we we cook very different things. I'd never yeah. say say, oh yeah. look, look what I cook, you know. And, yes. and I don't think she, you know, she doesn't need it now. <laughs> no, no. Um, and I expect your children um have mm. got they got pretty varied palettes now. Are they are they keen well, on food or or yes, you sort of having yeah, to force them to try stuff and definitely. I mean, my youngest Freddie is very sort of he loves sushi and he loves wow. sea cool. urchin and fish and and um that sort of thing, you know. So he you can take him anywhere because he'll always find something on the menu. Lola, yeah. my 15-year-old, loves luckily loves things like ramen and noodles and Thai food. Yeah. But, but yeah, doesn't like fish and and you know, yeah. she's quite yeah. sort of she much prefers a Nando's, which I love Nando's, by the way. Yeah, um, yeah. McDonald's again, you know, has a yeah, time. Yeah, we all them. love a Macca's. <laughs> yeah, Macca's, Nando's. So taking, we're taking a batch. She's a weekly boarder at, um, at Teddy's, and and taking it back on Sunday night. So either it's always Nando's on the way back, which I I love, yeah. you know. Extra yeah, Nando's, we all love back. a bit of that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, but they are they you know they're fussy in their own way. So to find a restaurant they both love, there are very few. There's a couple of Thai ones near me in West London. They love ramen restaurants, and also. Yeah. The walls are used to be the, the the sort of staple that we go to, you know, because there was something for everyone. But since yeah. um, Jeremy and Chris, who were the owners, left, it's now we can't really go back. So, so which okay, is okay. So it's a bit, yes, yeah, so um, that's the list. 
it's off the list, but they're they're quite sport because they come with me, you know, to to, hmm. to, to restaurants. The thing that you know, my job, one of my jobs is working for the Mail on Sunday is yeah, restaurant credit. You know, they're quite they're quite they're quite up to date on the restaurants of London. Yes, no, very good. And um, have you so your sort of restaurant reviews? Have you ever done a review on a restaurant? Um, that the owner has really not liked and, and then subsequently been banned from the... No, no, that was more sort of Adrian Gill, uh, Giles. Yes, I suppose like, it is, yes. Yeah. There. I My theory of restaurant critics, for what it's worth, is, you know, I there's so many small good restaurants across the country that I go looking for for, for the good, you know, and I, I feel it particularly unfair if I came on a bad night with a small restaurant that let's say a couple have put all their money into, spent their whole life working on, and there's a bad knife and a bad night, you know, a few yeah. things go wrong. And I come in and, you know, and, and then, you know, destroy. I think that's a little bit unfair. Right. On the other hand, my job is, is for, you know, to the reader. Um, yeah. That's the person who who I've got to be honest with. So on the whole, I'm positive. But if if something is not very nice, you know, you're sort of saying that was that might need work. And yeah. sometimes they have shockers. And, and it, you know, it, you know, if it's sort of bigger big mass restaurant groups mm. that, that are just getting lazy i don't feel any um compunction or any any worry to 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 to, to um be right. honest but i think honesty mm. is the key thing but not not cruelty because you know the language of of hate and dislike is much richer than the language yeah. of 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 delicious delectable blah 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 yeah. whereas yeah. You, you, when you hate something or, or dislike something you have a much wider palette with which to yes work with. yeah no um i can see that okay um and so what do you think restaurants in the in the UK hmm. um and how they rate compared to restaurants around the world because um I noticed a recent survey um rated the UK pretty low down on the list what, what survey was that <laughs> um oh god I don't know it was something I looked up or I googled it I but, I um, yeah I I would I say mean, that's, what do you think that's incorrect but listen, I'm not going to come across also John Bull and flag waving and say, you know, Royal Britannia and all the rest of it. But I'd say that I travel. Well, it's just sort of traveling again, but I, I'm also a travel writer. So mm. I, you know, I travel a huge amount. And, you know, places like Paris, OK, Paris is slightly changed now, but it used to be the case that if you want to go and eat French food, Paris is the best place to do yeah. it. But you wouldn't yeah. find much else apart from perhaps Moroccan or Vietnamese, mm. um, Algerian, places where, yeah. you know, there have been French colonies and the rest of it um and the same with um italy you know you wouldn't go you wouldn't find perhaps the best northern thai food in rome you know but yet you oh, find one no, of the of classics, classics so you find very strong very strong food cultures whether it be chinese or yeah indian or italian or french tend to you know um, venerate their own food mm. and, and and especially local and all the rest of it London's always been a city built on immigration, Bristol, yes. uh, Liverpool, Manchester. Yeah. And so they, it's always been much more welcoming to different cultures. Um, and so I think still, I, th I don't think New York, I mean, I was in New York a couple of months ago and there's lovely, wonderful stuff in New York. Yeah. Um, I still think London is one of the best food cities for depth, for breadth, um, from your you know, from the shimmering three star of Claire Smith at Core right down to, you know, the the, the really, really good dim sum place hidden away. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In some part of Ealing. Um, I just think there's depth and breadth and you can never be bored. So I really think that in terms of restaurants, I do think that Britain is 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 up there yeah. with the best. Um and I certainly you'd find it easier to eat well in Britain than you do in parts of France, the Midwest yes. of America. You know, yeah. I love America. I'm not worried about it, but yes, I, I, I do think that's a bit unfair. So I, I mean, I would say that, wouldn't I? As I say, but, but no, I think no, that, no, that it's, interesting. It, it's getting a much better place to eat. But the thing yeah. about this country, I find, is there's wonderful stuff at the top, great stuff at the bottom. It's the middle, you know, the place yeah. where you can get away with twenty quid a head. Mm. That, that's, that's, that's the place that really needs work. Yes. But it's there are places you just have to to look. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Um and and Tom, do you what's your sort of uh, favorite um nationality of food? Oh God, I mean it, it it depends on 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 the day of the week really. But I suppose yeah. I do eat an enormous amount of of Thai food, proper Thai food, not the sort yeah. of dreary you know okay. west westernized curries, but you know the sort of either northern or or Isan or yeah. southern you know, fiery and and occasionally stinky. You know the sweet yeah. sour salty yeah. all balanced. 
Yeah. I love Cantonese food. You know, I love the fact that now it's not just Chinese food, it's Sichuan food, it's Cantonese food, it, yes. it, it's speaking yeah. food. Um, Mexican food, people are cliched about Mexican food, and Mexican food is is as varied and wonderful as any France, Italy, uh, um, uh, China. I'm actually off to Mexico on what is it, uh, on Friday, I think, and I cannot I, wait. You know, the, when you arrive it. in Mexico City and the smell of massa flour and yes. fag smoke and diesel fumes, and, you know, I find it very difficult to walk down the street without having about nine tacos or yes. or, or, or gorditas or whatever, or whatever it may be so I love and you know whether it Mexico City you get all of it but you know you can be in Veracruz you can be in um, Oaxaca um, you know so yes so that's the thing um, but really most foods I love and and but it is I do move more towards things with a bit of chili in to be honest yeah yeah um, and, and British and, food yeah. well of course of course we, yeah. we love British food um, and um, so the, the current sort of e economic <laughs> climate and the rising costs and you know it must be very challenging for restaurants um places are shutting down quite a lot of places are having to shut down what advice would you give to restaurants to survive this oh gosh i don't think there is any advice to, to, a, to a food critic <laughs> i think what not just what i mean food critics to a certain extent you hope reflect you know the the who you're who you're writing for but what you know it, it's about value you know now i went to the library the other night in notting hill two stars brett graham a brilliant chef um and you know it was quite expensive you know i'm not really a fan of tasting menus but you know brett's kitchen is out of this world and it was like mm -hmm. 15 courses or something which is definitely not my usual sort of food but and it was relatively expensive, or very expensive. But it was it was about value. It was worth it. Yeah. You had thirty people in that kitchen cooking for forty covers, doing the most. And it wasn't fussy, you know. The flavors were there, the technique was there, and you know it's a once a year treat, and it was absolutely outstanding. And again, you can go and have, you know, a, a, I went to a there's a new Thai place called I think Speedboat in 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 Soho, which is based on the sort mm -hmm. of. I don't, Chinatown food of Bangkok and again that's you know 20 pounds but actually that's relatively expensive for for Thai, um, Thai food like that but anyway it's very good but I think people want value you know not to be ripped off not to have yeah. hidden charges um you know smiling so you know because at the other side you think of the food but also restaurants not just about the food it's about the no. service it's about the atmosphere it's about who you're with it's about your yeah. mood it's a million different things um yeah. that make you love a place and the food yeah. is although hugely important not everything so mm. you know you want the full spectrum and yeah but you go back to value you know it's it's it is a luxury eating out but f you know but for everyone who, who works in restaurants and own restaurants it's not it's, it's their life um so yes you know it's, i've set menus at fantastic value you know go for the set menu but in terms of advice you know just i think keep it simple you know yeah. going back to that you know, yeah. we, uh, we're moved away from that very ornate overwrought mm. slightly pretentious food and and yeah. uh you know, back simplicity. Now, exactly and let letting you know for me british food is about very good seasonal ingredients mm. um treated well you know same with italian food same with yeah. most foods actually let the ingredients do the talking now you know yeah. river cafe might not be you know certainly not cheap but it's still, you know, for me, one of the great restaurants on earth. You know, it yeah. it's just the purity of the product, the, the quality of the cooking, um, the atmosphere, everything about it, it makes it into just one of the great restaurants in the, yeah. in the world. And I I love it. But, you know, it, like I say, I'm as happy at a taco stall in in, in, in Mexico City as yeah. I am at the Lebri or the River Cafe. So, yeah. yes, it's it's about that magic coming together of, of everything coming together and so yeah. if you can get that right you know and and you know yeah i think so yeah. in terms of that very long-winded so, uh, way of no, saying no, no, it's, it's really interesting <laughs> it's but very yes it's, it's about keeping it simple yeah and value and you know just make it into if people can come out and spend their money you know make sure that people walk away with you know having had a good time and come back that's the point yeah exactly it's a good overall experience i suppose mm. isn't it um and Tom, what have you got a sort of best uh, dinner or lunch you've ever had? Um, Is there well, one sort that of, just stands out? I always, gosh, there's so many, you see, and it depends on, you know, sometimes it's, you know, the most amazing sort of seafood, 
eating at four o'clock in one of those sort of restaurants in Ibiza. Um, you know, I can't even remember what they're called. Now, there's two very good ones out there. They'll come back to there's me. One um, on that island. I can't even remember what the island's called. Oh, now. what, Formentera over there? Oh, Is yes, that Formentera? Formentera or... that, yeah. There's, 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 very, there's one called there. Shaco. I think it's called Shaco, which is anyway, that, that sort of, you know, it's 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 summer and you're sat there and lots of rose and yeah. and you know, delicious seafood. Um other times it will be uh you know Contramar in Mexico City, which does all sorts yes. of again amazing things with fish. Sometimes you might be in Tokyo, you know, going off to see well the old Tsukiji fish market and eating yes. exquisite sushi to see me at six in the morning with a cold beer. Yeah. Um Thai street stores, you know, there was so many, and that's the yeah. joy of, I suppose, my job. But, you know, the thing about food is it's unlike, you know, it's a one universal experience we have. It's, you know, you can dodge your taxes, you can be celibate. You don't even have to like food, but you have to eat it. So we yeah, all have an opinion. Exactly. It's just that, you know, I'm well, lucky enough to be paid. thing in life, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is, and, and it gives, you know, and you can live to eat or eat to live, but, but um, whatever happens you know it's something that we all have a view on and yeah, so everyone's yeah. you know no view is is that's that's why you know, everyone's view is relevant and important yeah. and you know what you like and what you don't like can, could be very different from what i yeah, like yeah yeah um but there are certain places and certain lunches and dinners that are you could you know stand and yes. die by it's amazing do, do you but have yeah, a favorite restaurant um gosh i mean depends on on again on mood depends i mean in, on mood. yeah yeah London, I don't like I say, you, you can't go wrong with uh, the River Cafe. There's a place called Thai 101 that's at the other end of the spectrum, which is wonderful. Um, where else do we go a lot? Royal China Club. Yeah. Um, gosh. And then, and then in, you know, there are places like, I suppose, Mineta Tavern in New York. And um, I'm, oh, I, I mean, Barafina Quo Vadis. God, I mean, there are so many. Literally, yeah, the moment yeah. I come off, I go, oh my God, what do I think of this? But there are so <laughs> many restaurants and yeah. you know when it's when I'm working in the week I tend to try not to drink and mm. be healthy and you know so you have Sunday Monday Tuesday, Tuesday. Try not to drink, yes you know and, and then, then Wednesday may Wednesday maybe if you're doing being really good and you go to the gym and you yeah. have chickpeas and sardines and, and, and you know, delicious wrong after Wednesday for and all then of about Thursday you think I'll oh, screw it um yeah. and then friday so friday you know but you you was i mean i used to a lot and um food writing is the only place left in the food world where long lunches are part of the job but i can't do really? a martini lunch anymore you know that killed and i can't do lunch and dinner anymore you know you, it's you very to hard to concentrate in the afternoon well, you, if you drink anything as well mm. well and eat a lot you sort of go into a food coma uh, that's done sort of going. mashed and it's sort of impossible isn't it so no, no. So I try to keep that. If if I am going to have a long lunch, it's usually a Thursday or Friday. But okay. I can't. You know, the, those days where you could do it most days are, are long gone. It, you know, yeah, you suffer. Yeah. For it. You yeah. suffer for excess now, and yeah, I really can't do it. So actually, as I get older, the days of not drinking um, are actually nice. And the days when you have a long lunch, sometimes well, you know, clear know. head and concentration and yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and. Um... Were a couple of final questions. What would your best draw be at a dinner party if you could sit next to anybody in the world, dead or alive? Do you have a sort oh, of ideal? Um, I don't know. I mean, I you know, I always think of all these endless famous and um and brilliant people, but really when it comes down to it, at dinner or dinner party, I'd much rather sit next to a friend that I know so well. That I don't have to make much of an effort of conversation. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, You're you just sit there and think, oh, you just... when you see the plasma one, you think, oh, thank God for that. Yes. Um, and then or you just carry on God. and make no effort, you know, because I suppose our lives are so much a lot of the time when you're out and you know obviously talking to people that you, you don't know so well yeah and it can be fascinating so for me relaxing is sitting with my best friends or family and just yeah. not having to make an effort yeah. much <laughs> less tiring much less yeah tiring. Much less. obviously, um, obviously so lazy but yeah no 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 I think we're all the same and um Tom what would your what would your if you had your last the last supper <laughs> yeah what would the last supper be um I suppose I think about this a lot and I have a, a column in the, in the, um, in the U magazine, which, you know, I always ask this same question and, and people funny enough always go back to comfort food, their food, their, yeah. you know, the food that they eat. Yeah. 
the food they remember. And so I'd have to say probably, and I do bang on, my mother's roast chicken is very good. You know, take a good chicken, cover it with butter, um, yeah. a lemon up its bottom, you know, yeah. and just roast it. Argus, are, uh, Argus slightly annoy me sometimes, but they're the best for that. They are you know, great. Crisp in, great. And you just use the juice and, you know, yeah. a baked potato. But then again, you know, it's, it might sound, you know, elitist and everything, but I do quite like caviar as well. So <laughs> <laughs> Used tin of caviar. Well, I think so um, for a lot of people. And, mm-hmm. I know. So that that would probably be that. And you know, because it's the last meal, you know, you could probably eat as much as you wanted. I don't really like sweet things, to be honest. So I'd probably have something like Montgomery's cheddar or Vacherin, uh, Baron Bigo, you know, really good. Oh. Uh, well, obviously, Vacherin is not English, but really good English cheese and a few, yeah. a few French or sweet cheeses. Um, but yeah, it does go back. Last meals would go back to comfort and happiness and security. And, yeah. and, and a roast chicken really is that, you know um yeah, so, so yeah i think if it that was that was it it wouldn't be anything exotic or and no. apart from big as i say a huge tin of caviar with nothing with it lemon juice and 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 melba toast no mucking around with the no, chopped up no. eggs and no. all that nonsense no. so yeah wow. <laughs> that caviar, the <laughs> how, delicious. how delicious oh. <laughs> um tom thank you um well, so thank you to do that it's really interesting and i'm sure um all the members will uh find that very interesting Fantastic, yeah, of course, and of course, if all them, if any of them, actually, all your members probably cook very well. You see, so the last thing they well, need I don't is the cooking lesson. But we have, we have thought about it for ages, and um, um well, yeah. Please but let me know. If you decide to do the do the. Cooking. Oh, we, well, we might, you know, because it's much better doing it. Oh, well, anyway, I'm so you know, Zoom is nice, but Zoom is not quite the same as as no. uh, as as. But anyway, yeah. Well, yes. Well, if if if, yeah, I keep yeah, I keep meaning to think it will happen one day. Well, okay, brilliant, and um. We will look out for your book. As well. Yeah, well, yeah. So, what, what are we now? Um, it might 23? be a while. Yeah. It'll be, yeah, I, I'm the proposal, but anyway, it's, it's it's not going to be. Yeah, it's it's been interesting to research it. I'm covered, and you can't see, but books coming everywhere. Um, <laughs> and so the research I find is always the most fun thing. Then, well, then exactly. I just wait for the deadline, and then and then wait as it whistles past my head. But anyway, Panda, thank you so much. No, for, thank uh, you so much.